Okay, we'll call the meeting order. This is the uh, Northampton Historical Commission of Monday, November 27th, 2017. Um, uh, we have a quorum and we are getting underway. Um, the first item on our agenda is the notice that the meeting uh, may be video or audio recorded, and I believe it is being recorded. And, uh, uh, thank you. The next item is uh, on the agenda is general public comment, and this would be generally for any issue that is not already otherwise specified on our uh, agenda uh, to give someone an opportunity to make general comments. Uh, if somebody, somebody wants to, uh, I, I have comment. a very brief and very general comment. It's just to say thank you to all of you for caring about our history. That's you're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and and our, our thanks. Uh, we get to sit here and have the glory and prestige of sitting on this uh, <laughs> on this commission. It's you that we should thank for coming here this evening and, and for uh, for presenting in the issues that you represent. So thank you very much as well. Um, the third item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Sarah distributed uh, at least three sets of minutes, I think, at the, in the last uh, mailing. Are there comments other than I'm spelling your proper last name? <laughs> <laughs> Did I not notice that? I said it was Yes, sir. Sarah, on the August 28th minutes, the discussion on the Lawrence and Abolitionist National Register District nomination. Yeah. I just wanted to go on record that I did suggest to Steve Stromer that um, they obtain a proposal to that nomination prepared. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, Reddit? <laughs> to be a move to approve both sets of minutes. Okay. Um, are you done with that, sir? Yes. Okay, great. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Yep. Yeah, there's a second. All those in, uh, in favor say aye. 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 Um, the next item on the agenda is the discussion of the Alberta Waters Meadows being historic mitigation update. Um, and I this has been a controversial uh, topic that has, has uh, uh, received a, a lot of uh, good and interesting comments over the, uh, the, the past uh, uh, several years. Um, the topic tonight, I, I emphasize, is not, well, at least on our agenda, is not to reopen the issue of whether the dam should or should not be um, um, uh, taken down. Uh, that's an issue that was decided by the city, uh, not by this committee. Um, and, and tonight's discussion is a discussion of the mitigation uh, plan that has been our uh, memorandum of, under, of, of um, uh, approval that was developed in mutual between the city and uh, the, um, uh, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. So, with that understanding, uh, uh, is there are you from the who's from the DPW to talk about the plan? We'd like to address the group, or we, you need to sit there or come up here. Uh, like. What is your preference? Uh, up here because I'm done. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Or actually, why don't you be polite to everyone here so they can understand you too? Why don't you stand right there and that'll be fine. We don't have a podium. Okay, I'll stand right here. Um, all right, um, Donald Scalia, DPW Director. Um, I'm here this evening to uh, speak to the Memorandum of Agreement, uh, which is between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Massachusetts State Historic Preservation Officer, City of Northampton, regarding the Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir Dam Removal Project. Um, so uh, the signatories to this document are the Army Corps, Mass State Historic Preservation Officer in the city. And concurring parties have been invited to sign this document. Those concurring parties are the Northampton Historical Commission, which is why I'm here this evening, and 
friends of the Upper Roberts Mellow Dam, uh, who declined to sign via email dated October 16, 2017. So uh, multiple permits needed to be obtained by the city in order to remove the dam. And this document is in accordance with Section 106 requirements and it is a historical resources permit. Um, there was a historical resources permit that was triggered. So the result of this process is this document which has been submitted to you for your review. Um, so as part of the, uh, the process of dam removal, um, the city had to undertake a, what I would call an archeological reconnaissance. Um, which indicated the presence of uh, uh, areas of archaeological interest. And that area was uh, named the Edwards Mindy Hoxie Tannery Site. And it was determined um, that it was a late 18th century to mid 19th century bark mill and tannery. So as a result of this investigation and, and was found, this memorandum of agreement was generated that requires the city to do multiple things um, in order to uh, sort of mitigate the, the damage which could be done to this site. And all of these things are spelled out in this memorandum of agreement. Um, the city, through its consultant GZA, hired PAL, um, which is sort of a, a sub consultant of GZA. And these folks specialize in um, uh, archaeological remediation uh, such as this. And we have them under contract. Um, they, they've already completed some work for us, and we have them under contract um, throughout the rest of the permitting phase as well as through the construction and post-construction phase to undertake all of the tasks which are noted in the MOA. So I could very briefly run through here. I'm not going to belabor everything in the MOA, but I can just kind of give you an executive summary of all of the things that are required of the city and all of the things which we have either done or intend to do in order to comply with what is listed in here. And then I ask as a, concur as a concurring party if this commission would consider signing this document. Um, so it, probably the biggest piece of, of this MOA is archaeological site avoidance and protection. So it, uh, obviously we need to access the dam, which is not currently accessible uh, for vehicles. Um, so a road needs to be constructed to access the dam. So we, in looking at where the sites of archaeological importance are, um, we, uh, sort of tried to aim the access road in a way that would not disturb the areas of, of greatest archaeological sensitivity. Um, but we also had wetlands consideration, so you know it, it, it was sort of a, uh, a tight area that we need to get through and we have to take the best possible route. Um, and that is what we, that is what we did. Um, we have uh, plans which have been submitted to you which you you've been able to see, and, and that's noted in the plans. Um, so it, what will happen is the areas of archaeological sensitivity will be flagged, fenced off, and signs will be erected pre-construction. This will all be uh, spoken about and put in writing to the contractor and supervised during construction, um, you know, be monitored by PAL, who's our archaeological construction or, or, or archaeological consultant during construction. Um, so that's the first piece. Um, second piece is historic documentation. So prior to the dam removal, photos will be taken by PAL of, of the dam and all associated components. These need to be submitted to the core, to this commission, and to Forbes Library, and uh, all of these parties will be given the opportunity to comment. Um, archaeological data recovery and monitoring. So this is a data recovery program for the site, which includes field investigation, retrieval, lab processing, and analysis, as well as a preparation of a report, um, again, um, for uh, uh, review by the core and Mass Historical. The data recovery is complete. It was completed this fall. So, so PAL is currently 
um, analyzing what has been found and cataloging the things that have been found. Um, next item is dam brook and impoundment monitoring. Um, so the archaeological consultant will need to monitor construction of the downstream dam access route and all construction activities associated with breaching the dam. Uh, photo sketches, measured drawings are required. There will also be an inspection of the upstream impoundment um, to note existing conditions and see if there's any other resources that we don't know about. And if we find them, we will then sort of determine if further consultation is needed and we will revisit the terms of this MOA if, if, if that is the case. Um, next piece is reporting. A uh, technical report about data recovery, monitoring, and post-dam removal will be sent to the Massachusetts Historical Commission and the Corps for comment also given to this commission, to the friends, and to the Corps. Um, Next item, preservation of the stone masonry dam abutments and earthen dike. Um, pretty self-explanatory. We're just trying to breach the dam. We're not trying to take down you know, the, the sides of the dam, if you will. Um, so those will stay uh, as they are to the extent possible. Uh, preservation and reuse of historic materials. So the dam masonry blocks will be stored by the city uh, for possible use in, in, in a future project. Um, some of them will be reused as part of the historic signage that, that will be um, erected. And speaking of historic signage, that's the next item. Um, so there'll be a historic signage and viewing area which will be created at the dam. The draft of the, of the design and content will be provided to this commission. So I will likely be appearing before you multiple times related to this project. Um, the, the documentation necessary will be the history of the dam as well as the tannery site um, and there will need to be coordination with all MOA signatories regarding the final design and that, that's something we plan to undertake this winter as we sort of inch closer to um, getting this project to completion. Um, also public access and path, part of the the documents which were submitted to you. Um, again, details of that will be finalized over the winter. Um, we still await our permit from the Corps, which we anticipate um, imminently. And um, the plan is to put this out to bid in early spring during peak flows. Um, so it is, it is our hope that the dam will be breached um, spring and early summer. So that's the schedule. That's you know, kind of what it says in the MOA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our consultant on board who is committed to undertaking the tasks that have been requested of us. Very good. So I'm happy to take questions if there are any. I'm going to ask you to remain standing for just a moment. Sure. Um, just as a reminder to the, to the commission, this is an update to us. Um, this is not a hearing on the dam. This is not um, a hearing on the overall MOA. The, Ultimately, this discussion will lead to our making a determination as to whether we want to sign the MOA or not, and that will come tonight. But the, um, yeah, this, is, this is not a, a hearing per se. Having said that, after we're, we've heard fully and you've had a chance to talk with DPW, then we certainly will welcome um, comments as, for as long as anyone will like to, to speak about uh, uh, the dam from, uh, uh, from, from others within the audience. So uh, uh, we tend to have it open, be open that way, but it is for the, this is not a public hearing, I'm not going to ask the DPW to take questions unless, uh, you certainly can speak afterwards if there are certain things you can clear up. But are there, are there questions that you would, that you would like to raise now <coughs> about the, um, about the effort, about the, the process or about the MOA? Um, I have a few. Um, first of all, Don, I just wanted to commend, um, I think it was Dave who put the memo together that described the process that was very helpful and clear and uh, thorough and it was a great um, <coughs> tutorial. Uh, I just have a few questions about the details of some of the uh, elements of the memorandum. Um, I'm just, I guess I'll take this in order as, as the uh, memorandum is written. Um, the historical connection is me not mentioned in any of this. Is that because they're a private entity and so they would not be? I'm thinking of sharing archival information with them. Um, 
as our our city historical society, our city <coughs> society. It's just a, a, a question I had. Um, I also thought it might be useful when the documentation is gathered to make that available on the city website. I think that would be great for the public, just for um, access for people to see uh, in an easy way. Um, the I had some questions about the access. Um, I understand that the path that's going to be retained would be a piece of the construction road that's coming in from Kennedy Road. Correct. Um, so that's a pretty long path. It's like maybe a thousand feet. Um, is there going to be, is there a plan to have parking at Kennedy Road or any kind of signage alerting people to um, that it's kind of a trail? It's really like a trailhead if it's a thousand feet long. Correct. And the, that'll be part of the details that we work out over the winter. So okay. it, as we finalize the the exact location and what the historical signage is going to look like that'll that'll all be the pieces will come together into the winter okay so um whoever's going to be des designing that would be provided with the programs when it would be one of the elements because i do think parking and just identification is really important yep absolutely um is there a budget for this is it part of the budget that? It is part of the budget. So we have encumbered funds in the latter enterprise fund uh, for the breaching of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam. I'm talking about the public viewing area and the access point. That's all part of. Okay. That's so there is all, funding set aside. There is funding set aside for the removal of the dam and all associated tasks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stockpiling of stones. <laughs> The Boneyard at DVW. <laughs> 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 Just wonder if there are any thoughts about that. Yeah, I think, um, and this predates me, the original plan was for them to go to Pulaski Park, so um, that's Probably obviously the ship has uh, mm -hmm. sailed. So I, I mean, my, my <coughs> thought about this was that um, I think that I remember when Jim Marla came to present it seems like it was a long time ago now. And a lot of the suggestions that we made were integrated, which is really good to see. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, this is just a point of clarification. Um, it looks like the tannery site is really the, um, it's, it's what was focused on in all of the, uh, the memorandum and, and the summary that Dave did. Um, it, that was noted as what was eligible for the register, and uh, it just, I noticed the criteria that they're saying, I think it's like A, B, and D or something, so that would mean that it has, you know, local significance, archaeological, and then some sort of um, broader reaching significance, uh, which he outlines in his memo. memo. Um, the dam was not really mentioned as being something that was determined eligible for the register. In, is that your understanding? It was really just the site itself, the tannery site? Yeah, my, my understanding is that both areas will sort of be commemorated, um, if you will, with the with the cataloging that is going to right. occur. Um, but I, I hear your specific question. <coughs> Yeah, because the dam was really related to a different set of historical activities. It's a much later structure, and it, I, I, it was just, I found it interesting. And I just noticed that all the documentation was really focused on the Tannery site and the archaeology and all of that. And that was just clarification. Others? No, I would only comment that uh, you know, I've been working with these kinds of things since the 1960s, and it seems like all the uh, the, the hoops have been jumped through, all of the thoughts have been processed, uh, um, going through our recommendations, and I, I would uh, really like to commend the city for putting together uh, this program that's outlined in the MOA. Uh, I think uh, you're working with the uh, the core and. Uh, architectural consultants. I think that's the way to play the game here. And I think what is really important, and uh, you know, this is a good thing that Martha mentioned, is the, the whole notion of linking in with the historic Northampton, particularly for the communication, for any plaques, for any markers, something like that. Because the nature of an archeological site is that you explore it, you excavate it, you record it, and there's nothing there that you see other than the memory. 
And so if you could bring that memory up in the, um, uh, uh, with an appropriate marker or interpretive uh, type information, I think that's the key thing. Uh, also, uh, in working with the uh, archaeologist, uh, I know Historic Northampton works with the schools or with Smith College or other universities around here uh, that gives them an opportunity for field experience. And I think that uh, uh, Northampton would be um, remiss not to consider uh, all those folks out there who are budding archaeologists that might like to have an opportunity to do this. <coughs> Yeah, I completely concur, and I can speak from a library perspective. I think Historic Northampton could be a part of anything that's shared with the library, and would hope that I think they're more appropriate <coughs> from an archaeological perspective because they have experience in doing this and in putting up signage in the community. And I'd like to see that. One of the directors well. knows a lot about dam breaches. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So you know. Even if it were just us reaching out to them, um, once the documentation reaches Forbes, or hopefully included more officially. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's possible because I'm not a public right. entity, but it just it does seem like an appropriate connection. Right. As long as we weren't limited in further sharing of the, whatever we received, I can see that. <coughs> Comments. I just uh, am hoping that whatever is stored at DPW, the rocks, you know, so they're properly, properly labeled so years from now, um, you know, they, people know, you know, what they are, where they're from, um, you know, until the use can be determined for them, you know. Duly noted. <laughs> uh -oh, I'm gonna get to public comment in just one moment and then I don't we'll have anything to add. I don't have anything to add. Those are questions, okay. But, well, we'll come back. If you have questions along the way, we'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. Right now, we'll devote time to uh, public comment. Um, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to uh, share that. Uh, yeah, we have filed the application for um, uh, listing on the historic registry. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, the dam is eligible for listing. Was it a separate? Um, was separate. it not? It, was the it, dam. Uh, the eligibility considered separately from the tannery site. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, um, had to do with the uh, the evolution of the uh, water history mm -hmm. in the city of Northampton. Yeah, which is also a great story in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and yes, the day that I got the uh, uh, copy of the Pell report, um, I shared a copy of it with Lori Sanders mm -hmm. for Historic Northampton. So they're starting a folder there. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that's a private nonprofit, and I, I think, yes, I so think the Forbes that Library is a better repository mm -hmm. for, you know, they've dug up a lot of artifacts. Um, I know that you guys have all looked at the memorandum. I hope that you also read the report, the, the PAL report, because that tells you, and this is a preliminary report, just how much history is there. This, coupled with the book that was written by UMass researchers, tells you how much history is there, and a lot of it is going to be destroyed. And so when you talk about, you know, great to have students come, it'd be great if it all still existed and students could come. Um, there's no question that the history is going to be lost. In fact, um, this is probably the most well-researched project that the city is ever about to demolish. <laughs> and it contains an awful lot of history. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. It, uh, part of the report, the report's fairly specific about finding that the tannery complex is the, is the area to be preserved, apart from perhaps the dam itself. So that, that is the question of sign. Um, they the, uh, the, the, the done a survey and the, the, uh, the palette of survey and the only area worth preserving or of note is the tannery complex. Um, I'm sure it would be open to any contradiction or, or amendment to that uh, finding There's if there is any. Is that, you they're still that's continuing. Accurate? They're still continuing. They, they're, they're not done. Mm -hmm. And they will be there at the time, you know, that the equipment is there. Um, they were there how recently? Yeah. Oh, well, 
Last what, about three weeks ago? Yeah, I guess, you know, I mean, I guess when Wayne was here at the last meeting, I think he mentioned to yeah. you um, <coughs> some of the, you know, excitement among the um, archaeologists that were on site about what they were finding and uh, do you, do you, is it at the point where you feel that the, um, the current survey maps of the of critical uh, resources, critical historical resources are, are inaccurate? I think everything is incomplete. This was a preliminary report. Yeah. They said that over and over in there. They said that it's continuing and that they will be there. In fact, you know, um, Hoxie's book, David Hoxie's book that's at Forbes Library, his memoirs, and he had you know, lived in that area all his life, um, talked about, you know, other artifacts that were there. May I have a question then? Is there any reason to believe, I, I totally, uh, it seems very reasonable to think that it's incomplete, as you said. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason, any reason to believe that artifacts will be found outside of the identified target area other than general Yeah, yeah supposition? probably, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the Hoxie house was uh, in that area. Uh, okay. the Edwards, Nate, Nat Edwards house, um, you know, anything, anything could pop up. You know, who knows how, how deep any of these things are. I, I agree with you completely uh, as a historian. Um, so my comments are not opposing you, but I'm just saying is there any actual evidence of anything beyond the, the, the identified target area? Again, I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't know we did not know as much as they found. I mean, we knew that there was a lot there to begin with, you know. Um, but the site has already also <coughs> been disturbed, too. I mean, the CCC riprap the channel, you know, back in the, what, 30s or 4? 23 or 4. 23, yeah. Uh, you know, who knows what they disturbed. Uh, there are vats, apparently, still there that <coughs> might right, still be excavated. Right, that was identified in the room. Yes, yeah. uh, I talked to the archaeologists when they were there. And they were there basically, they're only authorized to do the path where the roadway's going in. Uh -huh. And we took a walk around and they, where they figured the vats were and everything. And they says, boy, we'd love to dig in here, but we're not authorized. Because they were there mainly to protect where the roadway goes to the dam, to protect that area. Mm -hmm. So when the friends have continually said that um, repair was always cheaper than removal, we didn't just mean the money. I mean, you know, initially our concern was the dam, the beautiful, beautiful dam, the reservoir. You know, that's the ecology has been there for over 130 years. Um, we knew about the tannery site. We knew that you know history was made, patented, patents were granted to um, uh, you know the tannery. Um, to Edwards, um, we know an awful lot of the history, but you know now we've got more nuts and bolts. Um, so you were not asked to weigh in, as someone mentioned tonight, but now you are being um, asked, not necessarily to weigh in, but you're asked for a signature, and as she said three or four times, this whole signage thing, what, what it's eventually gonna be, is still kind of, it's, it's a work in progress. So you could be signing something tonight that doesn't actually come to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we ask that you make a symbolic statement and decline to sign. Um, other historic commissions have done this before. It's not a big deal. You're not gonna stop the project. Your signature is not required. They like to have it, but it's not required. Most recently, I think um, Historic Commission in Chatham declined to sign a memorandum of agreement, another one in Concord. So it wouldn't be like you'd be breaking new ground. Um, this plan was always going to be the most destructive. There were, there were less destructive alternatives that were available and cheaper, but there was never a negotiation and really for wanting to protect a really beautiful historic dam reservoir and, and historic tannery site, we were basically considered a nuisance. Um, but in a few months, we will see the cost of our collective failure to stop the city from carrying out its plan. Um, we've refused to sign, we've declined to sign. Um, and we ask that um, 
as an acknowledgement of um, we feel you've been shut out of the process. And believe me, this, all of this, a little bit was required by the Army Corps. The majority of this was required by Mass Historic Commission. Um, I don't know how enthusiastic um, everybody else was about having to do <coughs> such in-depth archaeological um, digging. But Mass Historic has really um, been the leader in, <coughs> in getting a record of what was there before some of it is destroyed. And um, it's, it's <coughs> due to their diligence. So why do you, no, I just have a question, why do you think Bronis Simon, Simon signed us? Because they fulfilled what she wanted, which was this, which was the public archaeological lab group getting involved. Um, Brona Simon, I believe, was the one that also got the Wampanoags and other tribes involved in case there was any issue with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they fulfilled what she asked for. Um, <coughs> They, they did the archaeological thing. And, and you know, frankly, if, if it hadn't been for the friends bringing the dam and, and the site to the attention of as many people as we could um, and filling out the application for, you know, national listing, uh, they wouldn't have pushed for this. And the city, I mean, when, when contractors, when the first contractor, Bay State, I think before GZA, um, was asked to take a look at the dam, there was actually a form that was sent out, and it said, um, is there any historic significance? And all they did was put a little check mark in a box. And that, to me, seems like something that's got to be changed. I think you, as the Historic Commission, need to make every other department aware of the fact that if any entity that's about to change or do anything to city property, um, they need to come to you and ask you guys if there's historic significance, mm -hmm. not just whatever department <coughs> the letter goes to. There other comments? Well, I just, uh, the other thing that really got me was when I gave, <coughs> when we gave you a copy of the book from UMass, the archaeological mm -hmm. uh, study that was done. It was written in 2011, and we never found out about it, and you did until we gave you the copy, until 2014. And the city had paid GZA to do this study, was involved in it, and never, they were supposed to keep us notified on things, and we, we never knew until we, it was an accident by someone at UMass that called and says there's a book that was just published. And that wasn't right on our part, or I know how I'd feel if I was on a historical commission for the city, and you left me out for three years like that. It should have been brought to your attention right away. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just me speaking, you know? Thank you. Yes, may I come up to the table and have some sure. papers? Mm -hmm. right. The good news is this is the last time I'm going to be talking about this subject, but I just can't get over it, and I am still very personally upset by it. And I think there was, and I was mentioning the process, and I'm going to repeat it. And I'm going to preface these remarks because I may be wrong about the whole thing, and if you can show me, like you mentioned, that you made recommendations, but if you could show me the date of the meeting, I wrote down date and minutes of the meeting upon the, when the mitigation plan was discussed and recommendations made. If, if that meeting occurred, if you can show it to me, disregard all the following remarks, because it, it all depends on this. I don't think there was this meeting. And in fact, there may very well be that meeting, and I missed it. Are you talking about the one where Jim Laurel presented the plans to us? That uh, there actually was that meeting. Well, 
a number of the things that are in this MOU were things that we suggested. Mm -hmm. You know, public access, making it more accessible, yeah. restoring, resaving some of the blocks and leaving them some on site, what not putting them in Pulaski Park. Um, when did that meeting occur? I, I mean, we have to go back and look at the minutes. Because I, I have a chronological but thing, which I showed you last year, and, and I'll give you another copy of it, just for the record. Okay. Because the first time I'm aware <laughs> of the mitigation plan happening was January 5th, 2015. And I quote from that meeting. It was, let's see, my, my good friend, me is my good friend, Paul Davis. And he's a principal environmental scientist for GZA. And he came to the meeting, and if you look at this, like this meeting was postponed a couple of times because of bad weather. I'm sure you don't remember January the, fifth, the winter of yes. 2015, when it was bad, and, and meetings were canceled. But they were making every effort to get to you earlier. In fact, they wanted to do it in January, but they didn't make it until February 23rd. And on that meeting, he presented the following letter, which was the mitigation plan, and it was an outline. That's the meeting I remember when first time the mitigation was discussed, and that's the first time I think you heard it, because this is when GCA was presenting it. And at that time, and, and they had basically, it's changed, but it, basically they outlined it, and it was, it was a pretty sound program. But the Senate, I'm gonna read two sentences from it. The mitigation element should be coordinated with the Northampton Historical Commission. Easy enough, and we all want that. And then, let's see the other quote. Once the city and the commission have agreed upon mitigation elements, they will be included in the memorandum of, of agreement. So that was presented February 23rd. They tried to have it earlier in January. And if you go further here, the reason those dates are important, because GZA and their applications to the Department of Environmental Protection and the Army Corps of Engineers included that this very plan. And uh, I have a quote that's in there and again, and I talked about this a year ago, and I want to quote what they were saying, that they, that pending approval of the Massachusetts Historical Commission on Northampton Historic, Historic Commission, the following is proposed. So they're saying they presented this in here, uh, but I maintain, and I may be wrong in this because I don't, I haven't attended every historical commission meeting, but at the time I was following it very closely and looking at the agendas. So I don't know when it was discussed, but February twenty third, twenty fourteen. February twenty third. Yeah, twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. And then it was 2014. Yeah. So Martha, we talked about uh, Bruce asked about parking. Uh, Martha said that it would be a good opportunity to create public access where none currently exists. Yeah. And then Bruce yeah. said that uh, the DPW should list possible options for reuse of the dam blocks and create an opportunity to solicit additional public comment about that. That's right. Okay, so it was discussed in 2014. I obviously that's before my chronological mm -hmm. technique, so I was unaware of that meeting. And that does change the substance of what I'm saying. But we became aware of it when Paul presented that, mm -hmm. and then he was going to present this plan in the things. And I think at that time, quoting from the letter once again, the mitigation element should be co coordinated with the North Carolina <coughs> Historical Commission. From the time that that was submitted, I don't think this committee looked at again and the reason that it bugs me the thing that really bugs me and that I can't get over is the following March 30th I came in with some suggestions false because Paul said he was looking for input from the Historical Commission and he really wanted to have your agreement with it so naively I came in March 30th with a, a list of recommendations not very different from what's happening now. Like there's no agreement. I had a parking place on Sylvester, Chesterfield Road, 
that intersection, which is sort of a mess now, that they can clean it up. I learned some signage about the whole village. I had a suggestion with the blocks that they recreate the curb. But what happened, I'm in the middle of that, and very politely was interrupted, saying, now is not the time for your input. I said, oh, well, excuse me. I, I, I didn't realize, I thought we were looking for it from the previous meeting. So I had those plans. When I, I never had a chance to have any input. But the thing that bugs me is that JCA submitted that meeting on February 23rd, 2015, as somehow the Historical Commission approved it. And the reason I say that, looking at this current letter from the Let's see, from David, David, the city engineer. Two things bothered me about it. One was the city received input from the historical mission and invited input from the Friends of Upper Robert Meadow Dam, but did not receive any. And that just bothers me because there were several attempts coming before this commission and the Department of Public Works where I specifically had input. You didn't have to listen to it. You could say, thank you, Joe, for your ideas, and ignore me, like Northampton Conservation Commission, like the Department of Public Works, like the Merit Office, like the Planning Department, and I could accept that. It never happened. And so when we had to vote on this letter of memorandum of understanding, asking the friends to be signing it, when we had the vote, I said, no way, because it's a lie. We didn't have any input at all. And I don't think they appreciated your input. There's another sentence. And the memorandum of understanding, which is a pertinent to the mitigation plan and the uh, permits for the Department of Environmental, Department of Environmental, whatever, and the Army Corps of Engineers. But it said, the comments not received within 30 days of submission will be assumed that the technical report is complete and acceptable. And I believe the Army Corps of Engineers and the Department of Environmental Protection assume that the Northampton Historical Commission was approving the general plan because it, no one ever did anything. That's why I said there had to be a vote. Like you could vote and say, okay, this is okay, or a vote saying, no, it's not okay. But not to decide was to decide. And for two years, the friends were denied input into the mitigation plan. And that's what bugged me. I may be wrong. I'll take into consideration the 2014 meeting. But uh, me, really, I can't get over it. Let me, let me refine that. Would you give me a minute? Yes. Um, the Northampton Historical Commission is on record publicly uh, opposing the uh, destruction of the dam. Yes. We found it to be historically significant and we were not in favor of its destruction. Yes, I, I agree with that. We don't own it, the city owns it. Um, the city is under an order from the mass DPW, as I, I probably got the right group, I don't know, to either, uh, because of the condition of the dam, I'm not an engineer, but the state said this, to either repair it, replace it, or tear it down. The city decided that of those options, they were going to tear it down. Again, we don't support that, never have. Um, the ability of the historical commission to stop the city from tearing down the dam is zero because there was a state mandate based on health and safety to tear it down as an as a antiquated, dangerous dam. I don't know about the facts of that. I might my own doubts. I think it looks plenty sturdy. But it's tear it down or stabilize it. It's not just tear it down. There's tear it down and stabilize it. Yeah. So we were on record 
early on of not supporting this disruption. How, the powers that be, the city and the uh, mass uh, uh, historic. Well, I can pay my excuse me. I'm getting ahead of myself. The city decided to, to uh, that it would tear down the dam after considering, um, I guess, the cost of any of the other options. And contracted appropriate people to look at what would be involved in, in, in you know, what, what they archaeological resources were that need preservation. And those people did their jobs and found the survey that we see in front of us. Mass Historic had to review the process, uh, uh, the plans that, Mass, that Northampton uh, developed, and they eventually came to the point where they said, yes, you look like you're handling this responsibly. And so the, the city then said, well, who can we help? Who can we have do this job? And then Army Corps of Engineers has, has been, you know, we could, I suppose the city could have hired any contractor to, to do it, but the, the city said, no, we'll have uh, Army Corps do it. Um, it's been out of the historical commission's hands ever since we rendered an opinion that that we were, were opposed to its destruction. I continue to be opposed to its destruction. Um, we've said that at every meeting, every time I've, I've met with you, which has been frequently, I've expressed that opinion. Um, but we can't, unless something is in an historic district, and this is, um, you can't just automatically preserve it. And even if it were an historic district, if there is a health and public health issue or public safety issue, the state definitely has the right to come in and say, very nice dam, but it needs to it needs to be briefed because of public safety. Um, and that that's kind of what happened. Uh, and basically the, 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 the scenario now is people saying, well, given that it's going to be um, taken down and, and stabilized, what's the best way to handle that while you know, preserving the historical foundations and property and other things that may be found. Not just there, but there's a wording in that memorandum of, of, of uh, agreement that says if anything's found anywhere, not just in that historic little zone there, but anywhere, uh, they have to stop work, call an archaeologist and assess what they've got, what's going on, and not, can, not recommence work until <coughs> the archaeologist says go ahead. So. That what we're looking at tonight. So that's the discussion. Yeah. I think we've. I. I. I, I I'll almost. Done. I believe that the commission definitely could have had better leadership during this whole process. Of that, I have no doubt. But I think that we we operated with great um, respect for the process and for the citizenry and certainly for the city, um, given the purview that we have. We've never supported this project. I never will support the, the demolition of that dam, but that's not our purview. I'm done now. That's right. Welcome here. And, and, and if, if I may respond, I appreciate that, and I really do respect all of you and what you do, and I agree with your work. Yeah. And I was never under the impression that the Historical Commission could stop it. When we were coming, we were looking for help to preserve what we could and to add some. Uh, what, what integrity what? to our argument. And, and the thing that irritates What's not me, in there, though, that you would like to see in there? It, it's minor. It, it, it's minor details, what to do with the blocks, perhaps where the parking place is, which isn't the point. The point is that at, when Paul came in in February, he said that he was looking for input from the Historical Commission and, I guess, from everybody, and from, from the friends. I tried to present my input to the commission. They said, now is not the time, and we don't have to vote. I said, but yes, you do have to vote. Not to decide, is to decide. I remember saying that to the group, and it just went by, and meanwhile, everybody's going along as if we had some input into it. I remember in the Department of Public Works, we had an informal conversation, maybe Jim LaRoe thought it was, 
I rem his comments about the parking lot and the stones, you know, he said, geez, we're working within a budget. And I said, and Jim and I were really quite adversarial at the time. And I, I said, Jim, last word to you was, you're spending over a million dollars. You're building this road anyway in this trail. You have the blocks. It's so marginal that the, the information I'm giving you and, and, and what I'm requesting as only ideas. Don't dismiss them as you're spending too much money and you don't have the money when you're spending well over a million dollars. So maybe that's what the Department of Public Works considered the input, but it was never any formal process. And, it, and somehow I felt that this is it. Well, we're, there's, gonna, there's a time for it. I remember people telling me that there was a time for it. If, if you remember that, I mean, I very patiently waited for the time. It never came. I'm, whether you sign that mitigation, the memorandum of letter or not, doesn't make, the reason I can't do it is because I really feel I was played. I never had the opportunity to make my case. Not that it was gonna save the dam, because I know that this process was separate from the dam, but it was talking about what we could do as the mitigation process. And believe me, all my marks, all my remarks today are only about the mitigation thing. I've accepted that they're going to tear the dam down. But uh, I said, somehow, I want to talk about the Historical Commission. I could write a book about how rotten this whole system was. And there was, last thing I'm going to say, because I appreciate your time, and I know you have a lot But my last remark mm -hmm. is. I, I didn't hear you though. He hasn't made it yet. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He was introducing his, his, uh, his last statement. Yeah, no, I, really, yeah. I really could write, it was enlightening to me. The last statement is, it was enlightening to me because I worked on the public sector in Northampton for over 40 years, mm -hmm. different committees, sitting on the other side, chairman of committees, opposing us. It was really an enlightening experience for me to see how the public was treated and disrespected. Not by this committee, not by this committee, never by this committee, okay. but other individuals within the city. It was unbelievable to me. That, and I even had pri private conversations with them later saying, what are you doing? Well, like, you, sh you should make your concerns known to you know, the city council. I mean, this is, goes beyond <laughs> this little commission. It's that like, I have. That they're aware of how I feel. The mayor. Mayor's, the mayor's yeah. aware. Okay. I think everybody is. And really, thank you very much for letting me unload it, and I'm not going to bring it up again. That's, that's the problem. Can I ask an initial question? We'll ask you two things. One is, in, in the memorandum of agreement, signatories to the memorandum become eligible to more or less blow a whistle along the, in the process. Signatories to the, uh, to the agreement get to say, hey, you need to stop because there's a problem here. If you're not a signatory, if the friends are not a signatory, just something to discuss. I'm not giving you any advice. I don't have an opinion on what you should do. But it, it, the, the language of the agreement is that signatories can play a role in monitoring and potentially bringing up issues that are of concern. And if that's something that you want to talk about as a group, it seems like that might be a topic. Second topic, I'm related to that. Um, I certainly value and you know the respect I hold you in. Um, and it's the, mutual. It's, it well, really thank, is mutual. Thank you. Um, um, and, and I hope we'll up to that. But the, the, uh, if there are issues, I mean, a lot of your comments are about the process. If there, if, but if there are uh, specific preservation issues uh, that relate to this process that have not been included in the existing draft or the existing uh, MOA, it should be some point of fact or some protection that should be there but it's not there. I hope you'll let us know because that could be something that we can, we can advocate for or that you can advocate for. The two things which I'd suggest, and I, I moved on from this. I'm getting rid of my deal, literally being files. Uh, the two things that I would suggest, if, if you're going to do it, is to consider the parking lot 
uh, Sylvester Road and Chesterfield Road with a signage of what was there, somehow separating it that it is a parking lot, not only for the dam people wanting to walk there, but for people who are using the trails in that area. And the other thing is consideration of the overlook using those blocks with the curvature of the dam, you know, with the signage there in an overlook area. And use the blocks as, as, as what? As, as, as a wall, as a, a, wall. a wall, part okay. of the design, that people can see, because you're saving the abutments, I believe, and they could see what the curvature of it was and, and the craftsmanship of the blocks. And that's a horizontal part of the way it is. Because of the- and, Sharon, you have notes on that? Okay. And, and obviously the signs, I'm glad you're working on because I think there has been a lot of the history that not only of the dam, which we were concerned with, but of the area and uh, and you could have in the parking lot something to say like okay, what, what the whole area was about. Those were the only things I was concerned. I'm not that upset with the mitigation plan. It was that when were the friends going to have a chance to have input into it? Thanks a lot. So I have a question for Donna relating to that. Um, the process for um, creating this viewing at area and access, is that going to be handled in-house and is there any kind of like committee set up to, re to work with a designer? Um, maybe that hasn't been thought through yet. Because one thing that might help um, bring some more support and people into the fold would be just to have a kind of broad-based committee you know, a few people who are representative of this group, or maybe us, or you know, I don't know, whoever, um, who could just, you know, be stepping along in the design process. It's always, it's just an idea. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, I, 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 I hope I have to consult to anybody, and I hope we're okay. thank you very we much. have a good relationship. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just think, I think that's a good idea, what Martha just suggested. Um, because it does seem like the focus is on the tannery site and not so much on the dam. And I think that um, having some sort of committee, um, you know, to oversee and make suggestions as to how that's going to be handled, I think would go a long way um, to, long way in maybe perhaps incorporating or at least ameliorating you know the feelings that have been generated you know along the process mm -hmm. this process so if that's something we can suggest or propose or mm -hmm. i don't know just okay. other comments yes I, I yeah one more on. one more thing yeah uh, was uh this is uh martha when you're talking about what joe is a little disgruntled of, of the uh, process we went through one of them was we did talk to the mayor. A few of us from the group had a meeting with the mayor with two city councilors. Good. We presented him a copy of the book. Funny thing is none of us can find any books anymore. But, but the mayor listened to what we had to say and he says you've got to give me time to get answers on questions with the DPW. We said fine. And then city council one of the city councilors says well when you get some answers can you set up a fall can we have a follow-up meeting on that with your answers and see what we can come with some kind of a consensus and he says well i'm busy now i gotta at least get the budget done fine the budget got done time went on contacted the counselors the counselors contacted him the friends contacted the mayor's office. They refused to meet with us. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, you can wait patiently. Thank you. My name is Bruce Fuller. I'm a resident of Northampton. I'm a retired engineer. Since I have uh, introduced myself, I'd like to know uh, the names of the rest of the historical well, commission so please. i'm dylan gaffney who dylan gaffney resident okay. of northampton i'm bruce kribisky i live in northampton also okay. i think we actually I all think we all do we're all, 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 all yeah. have to maybe like david drake uh, in florence okay martha lyon okay paul Vogel. fogel okay uh, barbara blumenthal okay and i'm sarah lavalli i'm staff to the commission thank you much appreciated 
I'm speaking as an individual. I looked at the dam. It's well built. Very well built. Mm -hmm. I say uh, I believe it is well, as well built as this pyramid in Egypt. I don't think it's going to uh, cave in, quite frankly. I think there's an, enough silt behind the dam so you have about three feet of water on top. I don't think it's going to breach. If it does, there's a sluice way built by the CCC many years ago that would carry the water down into the lower Roberts Dam. Okay? I had a professor in engineering school that specialized in dams, and if he was still alive, I would call Dr. Mur Murkies and have him come up here and take a look at the dam. I think that the dam should be pre preserved, um, and that uh, I hopefully that the Historical Commission will not sign um, the memorandum, okay? So, and um, if I had cancer, as I was diagnosed, I would get a second opinion, okay? I think a second opinion, so I'd like to have the Historic Commission ask for a second opinion. Okay? I've spoken. Can I just comment that I think some of this is kind of bass-ackward because at the 11th hour, all of this history is being discovered. All of it, right now. I mean, the Army Corps and the city are done. They've dotted their eyes, they've crossed their T's, the dam is coming down. <coughs> And now, at the 11th hour, all of this, and as I said, this PAL report, this was preliminary. And they're going to keep going, and they're going to keep finding more. And what good does it do any resident in the city who might have an interest in this? Maybe they didn't have an interest in the dam, but maybe they have an interest in early manufacturing or the you know early enterprises in the city of Northampton. It is Northampton history, after all. At this point in time, it's a moot point. No one could do anything about it. No one could act on it. Yeah, they can read the report of you know what used to be there. The sign will tell us what used to be there. Um, but it seems like the process is backwards. That this is what needed to be done first, not at the end of the process. And you know whether that's the city, whether that's on the Army Corps, you know, uh, is still being uncovered. My, my impression is that there was a state engineer. The state uh, office of dam safety is in charge of every dam over a certain size. The state agency that's in charge of inspecting dams. Yeah, yeah. And they have specialists to do this. I have no idea about their competence. They made a determination on, on behalf of public safety that some dams. I'm, yeah, I'm aware of all of that. So, yeah. so, uh -huh. Um, yeah, and uh, the other thing too is that I, at least I'm, maybe I'm not understanding this, but the way this memorandum reads, this is a memorandum of understanding of how this is, site's going to be dealt with. How it's going to be. The long term. It's, yeah. It doesn't talk about how the TAM is coming down at all. I know. And we're not, we're not involved in that. Yeah. That's a decision that's being made outside of, really outside, outside the city. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, when I, I look at this and I read this with the assumption that the, sit, the state is making this decision to deal with this piece of property and we have to find the best way to confront that and live with it in the long term. You know, I think that um, this memorandum is, is really good. I, I mean, I, you know, aside from, um, again, you considering that the state is making the decision and we don't have any way to, to um, control that, what would you propose that they do differently? That this exploration of the history of the site had been done earlier. Okay, but that process. doesn't that doesn't yeah. have anything to do with this memorandum. Yeah, but I'm just I, I added this as a last comment. Yeah. No, I think those are all really great. You and know? I think that um, again, you know, I'm sorry that you had such a bad you know situation with the mayor and the city council. 
Um, I think that all of this needs to be made known to you know the DCR, their dam safety people. You know that they're not really taking enough care with this process and that um, whatever. But all I'm saying is we are being asked to respond yes. to this plan to deal with this once this yes. dam is taken down by an entity that is not within, within the city. And I don't, I mean, I think, I don't really have It's a city asset, is what I'm saying. It's a right. historic asset of the city. You're the historic committee. We completely agree. We have, yeah. we, we have yeah. 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 records since 2013 yeah. or 14 that we posted. Yeah, so what would you, again, given that this decision is outside of our hands, and you've already in this room's hands, what would you want to see different? Uh, all I can Moving do is ahead. just say the same thing over and over that I, why are they not getting what I'm saying? Thank I think that what you're asking us to do is to stop this project. I'm we not, I, no, God, no, no, no. I mean, you, you know, our that. time for that is You're kidding, we need to do more research, we need to do more investigation. We don't have the ability to make that happen. Well, I think she said from this Jeez. point on, this has been a learning experience that we yeah. need to yes. do, and our, there are, do our homework first, yes. do the research first, and then yeah. Right. Move. I mean, Make as I said, at the 11th out. hour, more yeah. history is still being yeah. excavated, and so it would have been, and I'm not saying it's on your head, I said, maybe it's the Army Corps, maybe it's the city, maybe it's the whole process, but since you are the historic commission and oversee or, or you know, have an interest in historic assets, wanted you to be aware of the fact that the really big research part has come in after the decisions have all been it's, made. It's and, a tough situation you know, because the, yeah. the, those things are only being discovered because of this process. Were it not for the Section 106 process and MHC and the Historical yeah. Commission's involvement, it never would have yeah. Sadly, on a larger scale, it's not unique to this. I mean, we've discovered this with houses that are torn down. We discovered this um, with, you know, with yeah. abolitionist sites with all sorts of perspectives where we so, don't learn until very late. So I'm, I'm Penny Geis, and you've seen me before on this and s another historical project. I want to say that I think it's important for at least someone who cares about the history to be a signatory so that you can keep watch and make comment and ask for changes. And that's, I know that's not what the friends are asking, but as an individual, it does seem to me it's important to be able to continue to have a voice for history as this goes forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, um, <clears throat> my question is, I'm Fran Tebow. Um, if we don't sign, does that mean we don't have any input on Sorry. what comes forward? So, yeah. As, as so a group, it does, yes. I think as, as individuals, the city will always be interested with citizens and, and to say, but as a group, my reading, uh, of, my reading of the MOA is that the citizens uh, have less voice if they're not signatory to the agreement. Okay, all right. That's my reading. Yeah, all right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, again, we have forever been in support of keeping the dam up. Yeah. I agree with the gentleman, I'm sorry, because my hearing, I didn't catch your name, but, it, but I agree with your, with your, with your, my impression is the same as your professional opinion, um, that it was a very sturdy dam, extremely well constructed, um, and probably would last um, far longer than our great, great grandchildren if it were just left alone. Um, in my opinion, it isn't worth anything. Uh, in the eyes of the state, the Am Safety Association, whatever it is, um, they made a determination that it was, it was hazardous. And I don't, you know, whether it's Unitarian Church, <coughs> City Hall, Draper Hotel, Upper Roberts Meadow Dam, if, if something's going to fall on people, <laughs> flood out, catch fire, suddenly public safety and health take precedence over historic preservation. And so the decision was made by this state association that the dam was hazardous. So I, my, in my analysis, that's where the appeal should have been made to say to them that wherever they are, uh, hey folks, you know, take another look at this because maybe it's not as yeah. shaky as you say it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that there's more, you know, you're not paying enough attention to the historical detail. It's but after a certain <coughs> point, even, even if it was the most historic thing in all of Hampshire County, if it's going to fail and flood out, they're going to say it has to come down. No, they, they historical value at a certain point, uh, 
play second fiddle to public safety. So we were very sad to see this death knell be decreed on that beautiful day. And I don't like it at all. We're not a fan of this project. Well, what we are required to do today, though, is to consider whether the mitigation plan, in other words, the description, how it's going to be, how it's going to come down, how it will be handled, what kind of respect will be shown to it, what kind of opportunity there's going to be for input from the public, from the <coughs> city agencies like ourselves, what kind of role will we have, what kind of protections will there be for the special historic uh, 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 resources that are there so that there's not a bulldozer driving over a fragile foundation or that somebody's not going to just throw away important pieces of a mill that they don't care about or so that uh, it, you know you will be treated with respect that's what this plan describes and that's and I read it carefully because I was opposed to this project and I was looking for problems with I, and I've got to tell you that I don't see that many problems with the plan. Here and there, I tweak a little bit. I feel kind of like you know. Um, but because it does seem to offer opportunities for there to be breathing times if there's something found, archaeologists are going to be on site. They'll have to stop work if they find stuff. You know, it's like those things we read about in Europe, where right? you know they're digging and they find you know bones or foundations or something like that. Um, and for uh, for a little town like Northampton, it seems like it's it's a it's a pretty high powered and protective plan for uh, for a project that we all wish weren't going to happen. Um, we proposed it, as I said, we've written, we've made our opinion clear. The Mass Historic, um, I'll say it on top of City Hall. Somebody wants me to. We don't support this. Um, but our plan is, our, our, our mission tonight is to say, if it's going to happen, how can we make sure that it happens with as big and soft a parachute as possible? And if you're in our shoes, please understand that's what we're wrestling with. We're historians. There's nobody here who would like to see once one brick torn down in our hand. Much less a dam. Yes, sir. One other thing. Uh, I think it's important for the Historical Commission to exert itself to say, we don't agree with this. In the future, the die is cast, apparently. Mm -hmm. In the future, come to us before you write the contract. You, you follow what I'm saying? I'll tell you a little experience in western New York State. When they were building the um, interstate around the city of Rochester, contractor bought an old tank and they just ran the tank parallel to the street, right through the houses, because the tank could climb out of the basement. And that's why how they demolished. But there was an old uh, saloon met the fate that way and I just shook my head and yeah. you know what a sad commentary yeah. so hopefully you as a commission will make an effort to take it into yeah. consideration before the contract you make a great point and, and I want to say the decision we, we made our point, we made our, our, our appeal, say take a second look, and that was to our higher ups, which is a mass historic mm -hmm. And they didn't like it any more than we did. But where the second opinion was needed, I think, was with the engineers, your kind of people, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the engineers in Boston, who were with this damn group and, and made, a, made a decision on their part that this was uh, something that is a dam that should come down. Mm -hmm. uh, whether there is a role in that case for for getting a second opinion uh, from a state agency that would charge public safety, I, I guess it should be. There should be a, there should be a role for second opinion for almost anything. Um, I don't know what that role is, but I'll certainly look into that. Uh, 
So if, if somebody telling us we could tear something down because of an engineering defect, it would be nice to know that that was a considered opinion that would stand up to uh, like a, you know, secondary uh, uh, validation. Um, but we've never met those folks, and I assume they're good at what they do, but um, uh, that's probably where the, um, where the second opinion should have occurred. Once they, once they, and they have, they're empowered by the legislature with pretty much absolute ability because of the, it's a scary concept when a dam threatens to collapse, pretty much gets everybody's attention. But when they come in and they say the dam needs to come down, pretty much everybody says that, that's what's going to happen, right? Because um, nobody wants to take responsibility for having, you know, preserved a dam that then causes loss of life. So, well, I'll look into that. Yeah. Engineers are not infallible. More than once they say, damn the decimal point. <laughs> they didn't say take it down. They said take it down or repair it. Yeah. And our fight had been to repair it. was a local it. decision. To and and the, the, I don't know what the estimated cost for repair was. Cheaper. I'm sorry? Cheaper. Cheaper. But um, the state offers money for dam removal. They do not, correct, they do not offer money right. for repair. But so from so after the dollar amount, it was cheaper to repair it, yeah. but from Northampton City it dollars, it was city. cheaper to have because the they could, yeah. Because they got the city. Yeah. Okay. But you know, we had come to your committee early on. We got your blessing. We went to the Community Preservation Act. They said, yes, $25,000 to the friends to explore um, the cost of, of repair mm -hmm. and possibly micro hydro and that money was not allowed by Claire Higgins to be approved. She plucked that out of all of the other CPA grants that were approved that year by CPA and let the city council vote and approve on them. She took ours out and she said I don't believe that that is his historic dam. I don't think there's any history there. And within two or three months, we filed the application, and it was approved. It said the state said, yeah, it's eligible for, for listing. Um, you know, that was the beginning of the whole thing, but we always were hoping for repair. We're at a point now, I don't want to waste your yeah. time. Yeah, just wanted to, to, just wanted to let you know they had but, a chance um, here. Yeah. Well, I really I hope that you're able to stay involved in the process. Really, I think you made a really good point about needing to stay close to it. And I think if there's any positive in all of this, I do think this is a great opportunity to just um, just bring more public exposure to the site and and the history that it is, and the history that the importance of it to this community and also beyond. So that's a good thing. I have a request, and it's really for Donna, but I want to make it in a formal way, and that's, would you keep the website current with what's going on with this site so that we can see, oh, this is the day that whatever is happening, and, you know, and just maybe go out and take photos. And, I mean, that's my interest, is taking photos. Just yeah. so, we can, so we can be involved. Is that? Yeah, that I, I, will, I will make sure that our department engages in appropriate communication. Thank you. Yes. Would the Historical Commission um, kind of stimulate or back uh, an article in the Gazette about the dam, the history of the dam, and what it's going to, so the public can understand, read about it, know about it, and understand what the issues are. I think it would be uh, helpful. No different than any other valuable historic asset, we'd be happy to participate in any article. Uh, if you have, um, I mean, our, our purview obviously is, is different eras and different and, and different facilities all over the city. So if you have uh, someone who could uh, uh, write a, a, a draft up a, a piece that the Gazette could use, uh, we'll be happy to contribute if the reporter I means the Gazette's call. But if they want to talk to us, we'd be happy to do that. Okay. Thank uh, so you. We took, like I said, I keep saying it's a valuable resource. We've never been in favor of this demolition. Okay. 
Thank you very much thank for you. your time. Yes, thank you. Uh, now, um, we, we should probably need to, unless there's more discussion, we should uh, discuss the uh, approval of the um, MOA. Um, as it was uh, said to us. Okay. Sir, is there anything you want to say about the next step? No, I do. Okay. I assume people would have a chance to look at it as, as written. It does provide for ongoing monitoring by our, our on site and uh, the work stuff and, and, and to be further work to be evaluated if there are artifacts or star force sources found. Uh, it provides for extensive um, uh, uh, I would say uh, you know, uh, security of the site uh, that's identified as the most historically significant um, that there'll be markings to prevent any vehicle or physical barriers to prevent vehicles from from using parking or, or unloading uh, on the historically sensitive site uh, obviously the most historically sensitive feature of the whole thing is, is actually what's being breached. So um, uh, there's that irony that brought up. Um, but as far as the archaeologists say that, but the, uh, all of the all of the tannery mill um, uh, foundations and anything within them will be will be uh, covered and, and preserved, um, uh, and there will be. Um, public um, signage and so forth that's, that's developed in order to help explain it to the property. I would um, support uh, Joe's suggestions of uh, uh, not removing any more of the stones than necessary in order to perform a, uh, some sort of a wall, if that's possible. I don't know if you play in the here, but, but uh, to, to, to reuse as much of the stone as possible on the site. Um, and uh, you you wrote down what was the other the other thing you were saying? Talking about the parking, parking, yeah. parking, yeah. parking. Yeah. 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 for public access. Signage. There doesn't need to be parking because yeah. people. Uh, that would all be part of the program for the, for yeah. the area. It's a narrow, fast road there, and uh, uh, is that likely to happen? Yeah, so there needs yeah. to be off yeah off road parking so that if somebody wants to walk around <coughs> and, and see the the dam. Um, uh, the, uh, site they can they can do that. Um, so that would be uh, my suggestion that we add to uh, and see if they can be included in the um, um, So again, it's it's a um, a bittersweet kind of <coughs> approval because uh, we don't like the fact that it's that it's occurring at all. Um, but uh, if it is uh, going to have to occur, we want to make sure that it's done with the sensitivity of protection <laughs> that, we, uh, that we want to see. Um, Mass Historic has reviewed this. And, uh, their, their concern is very professional and, and uh, well-reasoned. Um, and they've, they, they feel that this is a, a, a viable plan. Um, so is there is there any discussion on approval of the board's approval of the plan? No, I, I think that the uh, memorandum of agreement is uh, quite properly put together. Mm -hmm. uh, it suits the requirements of Section 106, um, and uh, it talks about the project and this outlines the mitigation procedures. I would only add as another suggestion uh, that the uh, Department of Public Works, our good friends, keep this commission informed and the public informed mm -hmm. uh, uh, as to progress and if there are any you know hiccups along the way uh, if you need our help you know, we're here to help and you made a, a comment earlier about inclusion of the um, uh, short yeah mm -hmm. i okay. think they should be shared i mean they're a partner with us they're but uh, and also just to follow up I, I would like to just reiterate that the design process for the um, interpretive area, it would be good to have representatives. Just if there's a committee set up for that, a citizen-based committee, that would be a good thing. I agree. And, and also you mentioned earlier, and I think Martha did, that, that, that any interpretation or sign, uh, signs include 
the dam as well as any other historic areas. Because again, I don't think that was specifically addressed in this document. I don't know whether we have to amend it or whether we just send a memo with it or just say. So this would be the, the text, the actual content of the you know, of the sign to be amended, or we could just add. Yeah. A, yeah, I think the procedure would probably the be to address the amendment itself mm -hmm. and then accompany that with a letter or something that would outline additional concerns. Um, because uh, a lot of the stuff we talked about is within the memorandum itself or within just you know the design process that they'll be going through, yeah. site design and all that. Right. Um, but I think it, it's sort of a two-step thing is that you've got the memorandum on the table, yes, no, and if you want to back it up with a, a few more <coughs> thoughts, <coughs> great wisdom, that would be the way to play the game. So let's combine those. Do you have a motion on that? Yes, I would uh, move that the uh, commission uh, approve the memorandum of agreement as submitted and direct the chairman of the uh, historical commission to prepare a letter outlining the factors that we have just discussed mm -hmm. and that staff will, uh, will help you with that. And in particular, have the uh, uh, Department of Public Works keep everyone informed as to the process. And that, that letter that letter to include the, the parking and the right. retention. Okay. Second. Any um, um, further discussion on the motion. I'm just curious. I noticed, you know, the, the um, memorandum said that one of the one or two tri Indian tribes did not right, sign it, that they did not respond. Right. And I'm just wondering why they didn't respond. Or, you know. Well, I think Joe spoke to that. He said you weren't, you didn't feel like you were consultant, right? Or you didn't feel like, no, no this is the name of the you know, yeah. my hearing, I'm sorry. That's just like Native American tribes. Well, that, that's not like an omission. Pardon me? Is that, was well, that? there was consulted, but they uh, opted not to. Uh, so they didn't uh, respond. Right. Uh, they didn't respond. They're not at the table. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and what does that, does that open us, does that open the commission up to any liability in the future? As well? I, don't, I don't know, I'm just looking at things. I think more, moral yeah. liability, but I don't, I don't think legal, but, but we should take it as seriously. You know, archaeology is a, a bottomless pit, so to speak. Oh, uh, oh. That once, once you get in, oh. actually, once you get into it, uh, you go through the different layers, and uh, just about every hundred yards up and down every stream in the county, you're going to find a Native American site mm -hmm. um, because that's just the way it is. And so, once you go through um, uh, the architectural or archaeological processes. Who knows what's underneath what's already there, but you don't know it until you go through this process. And so I think the memorandum <laughs> outlines the process. That they're going through. You know, it may be um, it, what it says about the Native Native Americans is it says yes. the the Wampanoag um, tribe of Gayhead and the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe in the Narragansett Indian tribe did not respond, but um, the Stockbridge months. Stockbridge Muncie tribe did and responded saying that the project is unlikely to impact right. significant historic resources. So it may be that the other tribes don't feel connected. I think given its, its era, if anything, um, it may, the silting may have actually covered uh, Native American uh, resources. Um, but um, at any rate, as long as appropriate notice was solicited or comment was solicited and none were received. I think that fulfills legal responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, I keep coming back to, to the language in the uh, agreement that says that if additional material is discovered mm -hmm. and needn't be related to, um, to tanning mill, it could be anything, uh, house foundations, uh, mm -hmm. uh, machinery we didn't know existed, uh, anything of that sort, it will be carefully excavated by an archaeologist and, and, a, and, and the city will be notified and there'll have to be a decision to restart the work um, once that has been removed or, or conserved in some fashion. So um, um, that's about as much as you can do if you're going to be excavating. Um, at any rate, other, we have a motion on the table. It's been seconded. We're in discussion. Any other discussion? 
No, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty in the language that was used. There's so much still to be discovered, but I, for me, I feel like that that's all the more reason why we need to continue to be involved, and it seems like we're more involved if we sign the MOA, so. Um, I'll call the vote then. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the memor memorandum of acceptance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that is accepted. Um, it is. It was unnecessary in order to have the they, the project will have gone forward whether we accept it or not. But we wanted to have a voice if we felt that there was an issue, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the primary reason why I think most of us have mm -hmm. gone ahead with that um, with the vote we had tonight. Um, yes. Uh, just a logistical question for you. Um, I have. Five copies. I'll sign it tonight. Given the given the vote that took place, I'll sign it. Okay. Very good. If I leave them with Sarah, is that Yes. Okay. I'll sign, or do you want to sign, I'll sign it before I leave. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah, and then and then I'll follow up with a letter outlining the things that the commission wanted. Okay. Voted. All right. Right. And we will we yeah, we'll sign we'll send a letter to DPW and okay. outlining all the comments that Bruce has, has uh, mentioned to us. And some that have come to us tonight. Right. Okay. So this was thank you all for your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the meeting that is required by Mass Historic. We've already had several of these at the local level of the Mass Historic Center. So we can make sure that we absolutely did and that everybody knows what they're getting into with the National Register District. But it's also just a good opportunity to talk about the history of the area and yeah. ask any questions. So if any of you want to know that. They do a really good job with this meeting. So it would be a good thing to turn to me. Um, OK, so that's December 6th at 6 o'clock in Historic Mass Martin. Um, demolition review ordinance, Sarah? I have no updates on that. And same with the local store district. That, I believe, passed city council at first reading. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, at the most recent city council meeting, so should be sent to y'all for the first of the year. Great. Okay. Um, state hospital project updates. Um, I can just quickly say that the um, fountain is almost done. Um, we're just working on the details of how to attach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. I'm starting to work on the mechanicals for that. So, and I'm working, I'm working on this, Sarah. So, we're hoping to get um, a drawn package out that would, could be bid on at the end of January. That's our schedule for that. Um, one of the big things that has to happen, though, is we've got to find out what's underneath all that stuff that's in the fountain basin before we can. Um, do too much more. So, do you want to take it? Mm -hmm. That's all, but that's the only update. Can, can, I, can I say one other thing? Yes. Just, so that, just that December 4th, um, some members of the Memorial Committee are going to do a brief presentation to the Village Hill Tenants Association. They requested maybe an update and just a little overview. And I think we're really going to try and be more direct about saying, okay, we'd really like some money from you, or yeah. either individuals or whatever, so we're going to be prepared to do that. I know, I think I can be there in time right now. I'm not sure if Joe can come. Okay. Next time on the agenda is upcoming projects for the potential CPA applications. 
So um, we are going to be having a second round of funding for CPA in the spring. There was some uh, fear because there's not a lot of money in the budget um, to that we would use it all up in the first round, but we didn't. <laughs> Uh, and there's some historic preservation funding. Um, so if I'm saying this incorrectly, Sarah, please tell me so, because I'm a novice at this. Uh, so um, I've been giving a lot of thought to this, just, just kind of the historic preservation, historic preservation representative now, and um, there are two things that um, are up for discussion. One is um, the first steps of starting to implement the cemetery preservation plan. So that's something that has to be coordinated with the mayor and DPW. But there is a group forming um, of representatives from the different districts that are awards, I should say, around the three cemeteries that were studied uh, that's getting together to meet to talk about um, getting that effort going. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of happening. And you know, I will, I'm gonna get involved in it so I can kind of keep everyone mm -hmm. informed. Good. Um, and then the other project that um, Sarah and I discussed kind of as a, just an outgrowth of the work we're doing on CPC is um, this idea about our commission doing a historic preservation plan. Um, you know, the other disciplines in CPC have you know, housing and open space, they have their own plans and so um, they have a sort of step-by-step -step process they go through for applying for funds and we don't have that and I think it would really help um, it would just help, it would help the CBA uh, effort, and I think it would help organize. And you know, this, what happened here tonight is a really good example of why we need that, because that could be something that's identified through the planning processes that we need to get in front of. So, um, if, you know, again, with your um, approval, or blessing, whatever you want to call it, um, I, I, I would like to kind of start moving that process forward perhaps put in an application in the second round. We may not get funded, but at least we've got it going. And um, you know, maybe it can be brought up again in the fall if we can't. There's an opportunity to get some matching funds for the state, funds from the state for this, and the application is in March there, right? Yes. Um, so with your uh, support, I Great. think it would be a good thing to do. Just for everyone's uh, refresher memory, we, this all, uh, the, the CPA has to allocate uh, a certain percentage of its, of its uh, grants to preservation. So not necessarily uh, projects that we initiate, but to historic preservation. So th those can be accrued, um, but they can't be not awarded at all. Uh, so uh, we do have obviously a, 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 you know, a guarantee of level of uh, funding for any good support, obviously something that comes directly from the commission is going to carry a lot more. Yeah, we're not using much of it in this round. So there's a good, most of the funds that are left over are actually historic preservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I haven't done the numbers yet, but some funds will be allocated to Valley CDC's uh, project. With, um, the Sergeant House. Sergeant House, I can't yeah. remember. That we all, we would, that's the um, housing done in the Pomeroy Terrace District, which is a great project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's the only that's historic project. Yeah. Because of the hour, I'm going to ask real very quickly on um, um, upcoming projects for CPA. Uh, no, excuse me, on uh, conservation, on uh, uh, number 10 on conservation awards. Uh, again, asking everyone to make sure are aware of any projects. Uh, I think you're aware of that, that request, or, but uh, please keep doing that. Uh, is there any reason for discussion at this hour? Okay. Move forward into staff or subcommittee issue permits. Um, and Sarah, you have one. Yeah, the demo review subcommittee uh, looked at demolition of 22 Mill yes. Street in Florence, which was a, it's a house that's set back behind the rest of the houses on Middle Street and was in very, very poor condition. Um, it was unoccupied and... Yeah. and uh, it was initially thought that to be a carriage house, but it was not a carriage house. The carriage house was removed earlier might not actually have been constructed before 1900 in any case. And on the subcommittee was... And, and Craig as well. well. you want to speak? You, your recommendation was to demolish? To, to allow demolition? not delay. To not delay demolition. Okay. But I, it was very little, it's very difficult to see. In fact, if you go by the, go down the street, probably won't even notice that it's back there mm -hmm. um, because it's blocked by a home in front of it. Mm -hmm. And it is, was in very poor condition. Okay. 
I think we need to do it to. Um, the, I don't think it met the criteria. The criteria. Is for it a dwelling or is it an? It's a dwelling. 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 It would. It was most likely factory housing at some point. Initially, the that second row of houses on Middle Street was identified as uh, separate building lots, but this was the only one that was ever constructed. Oh. Yeah. 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 So it doesn't actually have any asphalt. Yeah. 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 That yeah. asphalt yeah. shingles. Yeah. I don't know if there was that asphalt or asbestos. Yeah. One of the two. Either way. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for going on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do we need to vote to, to um, no. ratify? Okay. No. That's all good. Um, any any other uh, permits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, did you look into that one on? Um, I haven't. Two, That's on my list. I mean, it actually looks really good, but I don't know if we, we, we okay. should have reviewed it. Did it they completely rebuilt the balustrade over the porch and painted. did it end up being an in-kind replacement or, or no? I don't remember what it looked like I'll before, but I know it was rotting. <laughs> but it, it does look really beautiful, so I don't know. Well, anyway, it doesn't have to. If you have, if in this case and in the other. If you have a proposed place, bring it, you know, get it to serve as attention, and we'll, we'll talk yeah. about it. Well, but I know there are a couple houses. There's a, a house on Elm Street just north of that that is being sold right now. So mm -hmm. we kind of need to keep our eyes on that one because I'm, I'm, I think the house needs a lot of work, and I'm assuming mm -hmm. that the new owners will probably okay. you know, do some alteration to it. Is there a mail to review? There is not. Okay. Um, we're at 13 other business not foreseen when agenda was prepared. I have one item after others. Okay, it was brought to my attention that in the district, uh, in front of Gawain, Gawain, what's how do you pronounce the name? Of that? Oh, Gawain, okay, yes, okay. Uh, the oh. check writers building. Um, that a um, uh -oh. the check writers? Oh, on Roundhill Road? It's up on yeah. Roundhill Road. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Doing an addition to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, with all. Yeah. And at any rate, a, um, um, a, a um, wall had been constructed for the purpose of becoming signage. Anyway, it was a wall that was not approved in the oh, plan that we approved. Sure. And it was uh, 20 feet long oh, yeah. uh, by, by uh, 40 inches high. About eight inches thick. A retaining wall, or just a freestanding? It's wall? not a retaining wall. It, there's there's it air on both sides of, of the wall. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks like either it would be a modern building used to support uh, sign letters, or on an old building, probably clad in brick and uh, and then used to support uh, sign letters. But at any rate, it's, 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 it's a very 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 long, large wall. So it's like a Jersey barrier. Is it brick? It is it's concrete? kind of poured concrete. Oh, um, ah, we didn't see anything oh. like that on the no. curb. Mm. Please take a look we at it. Yeah. We approve those. It things. is. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So, so apparently not. Well, there's not. I mean, the, it's not really anything to look at yet. This this doesn't have any permits from the building department or from the planning department either. So the this was something that the property owner just went ahead and, and mm -hmm. proceeded with. Oh, so and the building department is aware of it and. I wasn't able to get in touch with him today, but when I talked to him last week, it sounded like he was going to go issue a, a stop work and talk okay. to him about what was going on. So this will be coming to our attention uh, in the future, but for the moment, a stop work has been um, imposed on it. Because it did not come before. If it's like for signage, is it for signage or you don't know? There's nothing on it right now. Like I can't imagine anything else. Is there else light? Is there lighting? Is there not, yet. not yet. <laughs> Wow. No, it's, at this moment, it's like a 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> 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 it's awful. Is what actually in her wife? That's the word for it. Come on. Just a con yeah. concrete wall. People have no taste. Nobody uses it. Right. No taste. It's like, God. Although the plinths have to be there. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you all for, for your very good comments, oh and, and um, so it was, I was very impressed with are we the. Are we adjourning? What? Are we adjourning? I just have to check. Well, I just wanted to say. Are we adjourning or not? I just have to check. I thought my <laughs> represented a, 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 an excellent example of, of trying to be responsive yeah. to very well informed and very, very uh, uh, carefully uh, uh, conceived comments from, from people in, in the neighborhood, and uh, I would pleased with everybody's respect and comments and also very pleased with the comments that came from. Once, um, once again, thank you for caring. Mm -hmm.
Well, uh, it doesn't always result in what we want, but well, you know, to respect everyone in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being here. Um, okay, I think so we got here. Here, I'm going to my chairman's.